Welcome to another Pilates Reformer workout. My name is Melanie, your Mild the Goth Pilates instructor. Today we're gonna do another moderate intensity Reformer workout. We're gonna begin on one red and one blue spring or one heavy and one light. Headrest goes up, knee lying down on the Reformer. And if you're not yet subscribed, which many of you are not, please hit that subscribe button so I can see you again next week. I also have some really fun new stuff coming up soon. All right, coming down to lie on the machine, headrest up. We're going to grab the straps Place them in your hands. Legs will come up to tabletop, arms will extend long over the shoulders, fingertips reaching for the sky. Inner thighs zip together, shins parallel to the ceiling. We're gonna press the palms down, exhaling through the mouth, inhale, bring them right back up. If you need a little more space between your shoulders and the shoulder blocks, find it now. Exhale, press the palms down, raise them up. So you really wanna focus on your rib cage staying down. So if you find yourself popping up through the ribs, really think about making contact through the back of your ribs. It's really gonna make a big, big difference in terms of how much engagement you get out of the abs and how much control you have. If and when this starts feeling doable, take your different variations. Your options are curling up through the head, neck, and shoulders and or extending alternating legs to 45 or extending your legs both to 45 out and in or keeping them there. And again, all of this can be done with the curl if you like. I'm gonna keep it in tabletop for today. And I'd really like for you to also focus on finding that deep core engagement as you exhale. So as you exhale through pursed lips, feel your pelvic floor lifting, feel tension building in your transverse abdominis. The sensation you should feel is a sense of tension between your hip bones. Each time you breathe out, like you're blowing up a balloon. Good. Last one. We're gonna press the palms down, anchor the elbows into the mat, make sure those ribs are staying down. We're gonna Press the palms down, keeping the elbows anchored, tricep extension. Taking care to keep your collarbone rolled wide. Still using that breath. Again, you can take any of those leg variations that you like. Anything you choose today is, is great. I'm gonna stick with the moderate version with the legs and tabletop. And you really wanna find that inner thigh engagement, squeezing the legs together. Good, let's go for four more. Shoulders plugged into the mat, collarbone rolled wide. Last two. And one. Good, arms extend long, up over the shoulders, plug the shoulders into the shoulder blocks. Let's go for arm circles. Press the arms out to the side, palms press in toward the hips, flip the palms to face forward, arms come up over the shoulders. Out to the T, press the palms in, palms face forward and up. Four more. Exhaling as you press through the straps. Once again, keep finding that core engagement every time you exhale. That's gonna be your key to getting core engagement through this whole series. Good, last three. Each time you press in, palms face your waist, and each time you come up, palms face forward. Now we reverse, palms press straight down, feeling those muscles kind of around your armpits and your upper back firing. Taking care to check in with your ribs, making sure they're making contact with the mat. They're not popping up. Finding your exhale. Good, three more. Palms face forward as you bring the arms out to a T and up. Very nice, last one. Very good. Arms up over the shoulders. Anchor yourself with your feet on the foot bar. You're going to grab onto the straps and place the straps up over your knees onto your thighs. So if you have double loops, you can use either the small loops or the large loops, depending on whatever is best for your body. Give yourself a little bit of space between your shoulders and the shoulder blocks. You may feel more comfortable with the headrest down in this position. Do whatever makes sense to you. For me, that feels good in my body today. We're gonna to start with the legs and tabletop. So shins parallel to the ceiling, anchor the thighs together, rib cages down, arms are long by your side or up over your shoulders if that feels better. We're gonna begin just dipping the toes into the well and bringing the knees 
in toward the chest. So we're going past that 90 degree tabletop, bringing the knees out and in. I actually changed my mind. I want the headrest up right now. If you decide you want that extra support, that's great. If that doesn't feel right, pick whatever feels good. So we're keeping the inner thigh engagement. Thighs are squeezed together. Ribs stay down. We're finding a neutral pelvis each time. Good. And then once again, the knees can come in toward the chest. And use your breath, that exhale through pursed lips to fire the TVA. This is a really nice one for foundational core engagement. Good. Let's take another three. And if you find that you're hitting the foot bar, you're welcome to place it down or take it off depending on your reformer model. Last two. This is a pretty simple exercise, but an effective one if you really zero in on the form. Very good. Next, we're gonna open the knees as wide as the hips while keeping the toes and heels together. So we're in a bit of a butterfly or diamond position. So now we're gonna keep that position as we dip the toes down and bring the knees in toward the chest. Exhaling as the toes dip down, collarbone stays wide, ribs stay down, and in. Slow and steady. Their goal in this exercise or this series is to really focus on control and muscle engagement. So everything that we're doing today, as you really find in any kind of Pilates, is gonna be focused on that core engagement and supporting the movement through what's happening in the core. Good, let's go for three more. Last two. And one. Very nice. So bring the legs back to tabletop. Now we're going to circle the knees. So we're going to open the knees as wide as the hips, draw the toes down, knees together, and bring the knees in. Open wide, toes down, squeeze the knees together, and back. So we're butterflying, we're taking a circle with the knees as those legs move now. So we're adding another layer of challenge. Taking care to make sure your ribs stay down. That's very, very important. Let's go for two more. Keeping your shoulders rolled back. And one, let's reverse it. So now legs are together, press the toes down, open the knees wide, butterfly them, bring them in toward the chest. Press down, open wide, knees together as they come toward your chest. Good, let's go for four more. This one for me is the challenging one, but I like it. It's nice going back to basics sometimes and really focusing on making it challenging rather than muscling through it or using momentum. I'm getting a little shake. What about you guys? Leave a comment if you are feeling the shake of truth on this one. Alrighty. Great job. Okay, we're going to take one strap off at a time, anchor yourself onto the foot bar with your free leg. And now we're gonna place the straps onto the arches of the feet. We'll go right into feet and straps. So we're gonna start with the legs at 90 degrees or as close to 90 as you can get. We're gonna begin with the legs in parallel, arms long by your sides or up above your shoulders if that's more comfortable. Rib cage down, squeeze through the inner thighs. We're gonna press the legs down to 45 or lower if you can maintain your neutral spine and keep your ribs down. With control, hinge at the hips, toes come up toward the ceiling. Abs stay engaged, find that control. And back. So I would still like to ask you to ex exhale on the way down. Find that tension between your hip bones. Find your deep core, your TVA. Pelvic floor lifts and everything relaxes and releases on the way up. Go for four more. Last three. Check your ribs, ribs down. I'm reminding you and I'm reminding myself. And one, very nice. Up to 90 circles. So you can take this at a very 
classical Pilates above 45 degrees small circle. If you have the range and you would like to, you can take a much wider circle. And if you need to, you can place the foot bar down for this one. If that's necessary, do whatever is best for you. Just ask you to please keep watch of your pelvis. So it's, it's in a nice neutral position. Your ribs are down and each time the legs come up to 90, you're hinging at the hips rather than curling the pelvis under. Let's do two more. Good, now we reverse, legs up to 90, squeeze through the inner thighs as you lower down, open wide, back up to 90 degrees. And again, take the range, that is good for you. It's not a contest, it's not even a contest with yourself. Good, we're gonna go for four more. Again, finding that exhale, finding your core engagement, and taking care to remember to relax the pelvic floor as well after every contraction. Good. Going up to 90, I'm gonna to flip to Pilates V, lower down to 45 degrees or lower, raise it back up, hinging at the hips again, not letting the pelvis scoop under to get the legs up. So we're finding that deep crease, your sacrum is staying heavy, ribs are staying down. You're finding a little bit of a different spot of engagement. So I'm getting a little bit of a different area of my hamstrings and my glutes, keeping a nice long extension and point through the feet. Good. And last one, extend out to 45 or lower, flex through the feet. We're gonna go for our frog. So your knees are staying wide, probably about as wide as your hips are a little bit wider. You're coming to that bent knee position or that diamond position. Try to keep your heels together here. Clearly was just uh, having my own challenges with that. <laughs> Stay down. Exhale as you press through the straps. Let's go for one more after this. And one, good. And now we're gonna go for frog circles. Bend the knees, heels come in toward your pelvis, extend the feet up, press the feet down to 45. Bend the knees, bring the feet in, extend up to 90 and extend out. Let's go for four more. Oh, I feel that stretch at the top, that feels so nice. Should feel hamstring stretch, stretch through the back of the knee. Again, don't forget about the core. You're working your legs here, but core fires everything. So before you go, find that zip in and up, that tension between your hip bones. Good, now we reverse. So we're gonna bend the knees in, exhale as you press through the strap, find that core support. Bend, exhale as you press, hinge at the hips. If you feel like your abdominals are bulging out, it's very, very important that you exhale and find that engagement before you press out. And you may also wanna take your range quite a bit more moderate. Good. More important to find the right support through the core and the right engagement than it is to take the range much more intense. Very good. All right, bring it up to 90 degrees. We're gonna finish up this sequence with Peter Pan. So we're gonna press low to 45 or wherever your low point is where your ribs are down and your sacrum is heavy on the mat. You're gonna flex through the heels. You're gonna find a diamond position. We're gonna extend one leg out to the right side, or the right leg out to the right side. You're gonna press through that left strap, bring the heels together to your center line. Switch sides. Right heel comes in towards center, left foot goes out to the side, push through that right strap, especially heels come together. Good, other side. Bend the knee, exhale, find that core engagement. Legs come together. Good, opposite side. Deep breath in, ribs down. Exhale, push out. One more each side. Lots of inner thighs here, which is very, very good for inner, for pelvic floor. Feel that pelvic floor lift as you press forward. Last one. Big breath in. Exhale, press. Very nice. Bring the legs up to 90 degrees, not farther forward, just with the heels up above the hip bones, ribs down. Give the straps a little bit of a pull if you like. Deep breath in, stretching is important. As you inhale, feel the air, feel your lungs, feel every muscle in your pelvic floor release. Feel your abdominals soften. 
Exhale. Let it go. That's a lesson I wish I had learned earlier. It would have saved me a lot of pain and time and money. So take those straps off of your feet. We're going to now fold the straps over one another. We're gonna stay on a red and a blue. If you'd like to take the blue spring off for a little less intensity, feel free to do that. So that's one heavy or one heavy and one light. I'm gonna extend the legs up over my shoulders. I'm gonna put the headrest down for this one. That feels more comfortable to me. And I'm gonna bring the legs back to that diamond position. We're gonna go for our, our lower ab pulses after some straight arm pulls. So find a little bit of space between your shoulders and the shoulder blocks. Big breath in, exhale, curl forward, shoulders roll down, pressing those ropes in that space between my inner thighs. Deep breath in, feel everything relax. Exhale, feel it contract, press through. Deep breath in, relax. Exhale, contract before you move. Shoulders down, arms are long. Good, lots of core work here. Deep breath in. Exhale, press forward. Inhale, relax it down. On this next one, we're gonna roll up, hold it there. Tiny pulses with the hips up and down for eight, seven, six, five. Shoulders stay rolled back. Three, two, one. Deep breath in. Exhale. Bring it back to starting. Release the straps down by your side. Next, we're gonna place the arches of the feet on the corners of the foot bar. I'm just going to rock, whoops, rock my knees side to side. Gonna release through the low back, release through the pelvic floor. So as you inhale, you wanna think about the air filling the space vertically, side to side, and diagonally, and really stretching out every muscle in your pelvic floor. All right, good. Let's move on. Next, I actually wanna do some short spines. So grab those straps, once again, if you drop them. Headrest is down, very important. Place your headrest down, please. Straps go on the arches of the feet. I'm gonna extend the legs up to 90 degrees. I'm gonna find a little bit of space between my shoulders and the shoulder blocks. And if you have uh, neck issues or herniated discs anywhere, this might not be the best thing for you. We're gonna start with the sacrum really heavy on the mat. Please watch this one before you try it if you haven't done short spine before. Legs are in parallel to start. I'm gonna squeeze the inner thighs together as I press the legs down to 45. I'm gonna send, hinge at the hips, send the feet back, close the stopper. I'm going to bend the knees, separate them as wide as my shoulders, keep the heels tight to the body, roll the spine down. This should feel like a nice spinal massage. And I'm gonna press the legs out in external rotation. Switch to parallel, hinge at the hips, send the feet up over the shoulders, close the stopper, bend the knees. And again, I'm not balancing my weight on my neck necessarily, I'm supporting myself through my shoulders. Roll the spine down, heels come in tight toward the pelvis, extend the legs long, find parallel. Let's do it again. I'm gonna take another three or four. So your abs support you, feet come all the way over, knees open and separate, and you really wanna press those heels in toward the body as you roll it down, finding abs as well as you do that. Let's take another few. If this doesn't feel good, just take straight leg presses down and out. I love this one. Does this one feel good or does it suck? Leave me a comment when this is over. <laughs> Sometimes my favorites are not the crab pleasers. Oh, good, last one. Hinge, send the toes over, 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 over. Bend the knees, heels come tight to the body. Roll it down one vertebra at a time and extend out. Very good. Feet over the hips. Let's take a Peter Pan stretch. One leg bends, the other extends out. You can pull the rope in toward your body just a little bit. Floss that, get a little more inner thigh stretch. Switch legs. Good. All right, we're gonna take the straps off the feet for real. We're gonna move on. All right, let's place on one red spring or one heavy spring. I am sitting in a cross-legged position. You could be kneeling with your feet up against the shoulder blocks with the toes curled under. I'm going to take the straps into each of my hands. I'm gonna sit up really tall so I'm not curving into my lumbar spine and slouching. My ribs are down, palms are facing forward, arms by my sides. I'm going to present the arms forward up to 90 degrees, not necessarily higher today, just to this 90, and lower back down. 
So your hands are going to skim the side of the machine and or skim the side of your legs. You really want to feel the muscles that support your shoulder blade here firing. And you're also continuing that core engagement, exhaling before you move the arms. Good, let's keep it rolling. Exhale before you move. Taking care not to round through the upper back as those arms go forward. You still wanna keep the shoulder blades squeezed together in the back to a moderate degree. You also wanna take care not to go into back extension here. You wanna keep the ribs over the pelvis. So instead of popping the rib cage down, you wanna keep the ribs nice and heavy. Good. And last one. Let's serve a tray. Elbows in and extend. Palms are facing up. Elbows in, big breath in. Exhale, find your core engagement before you extend the arms. Gazes forward, can be on a slight upward glance, but not so far that you're craning your neck. You want a nice long neck, long line through the back of the neck. You don't want to let your chin jut forward. You want to draw your ears back, kind of giving yourself a chin tuck, like you're backing up a car and the car is your head. Good. Send the arms forward. Palms flip to face you. Check in with your ribs. Make sure they're down. You're going to open the arms wide. Exhale. Fingertips come together. Shoulder blades come together. Exhale. Feel that upper back squeeze as the fingertips come together. Shoulder blades move and they come to face each other. Exhale. Oh yeah, lots of back here. Lots of shoulders. Shoulder blades come together. Exhale. Feel those upper back muscles as the fingertips come together. Good. Two more. Feel that core engagement before you push through those straps. Very nice. Okay. Next, we're going to go for a shave head. You're going to make a triangle with your thumb and your forefinger. You're going to hinge forward through the body. You're going to maintain that triangle shape with your hands as you extend the arms up and bend them in. So elbows stay wide. Good, and we're just bending and extending the elbows, getting a little bit more triceps, trying to keep that shape together this whole time. And again, shoulders are staying down. We're not pulling them up toward our ears. You're letting the shoulder blades melt like they're sliding down your back. Core is staying engaged through this whole thing. Good. Last one. Reach the arms up and around. If you're in a cross-legged position, just switch your legs to the opposite leg is on the bottom. You're gonna flip your hands so that you're in an overhand position. So if your arms are going forward, your palms are facing down now. So find that upright seated position. I'm gonna bring the elbows tight to my body. We're gonna go for boxing. So both arms push forward to 90 degrees. Elbows stay down as you bring the elbows back, taking care to not flare your ribs. Shoulders roll back, feeling lots of shoulders with this one. If you need more or less resistance, feel free to take the springs down or up. Good. Let's keep it going. Exhaling to engage your core before you go. And once again, feeling the shoulder blades come together as those elbows go back. So we're getting back work here as we're working the arms. Good. Last two. And one. Good. Now we go for a single arm. Right arm extends long and comes back while the left arm stays where it is. Switching sides. Left arm goes forward. Oh yeah, quite a bit harder. Right arm goes forward. Elbow stays down as it comes in. Taking care not to round through the lumbar spine. It can be very easy to slouch once the arm work gets tricky. Good. Let's take one more each side after this one. <sighs> Feeling the shoulder blades come together so you really get the most out of your range and firing all those muscles as you come in. Beautiful job. Let's grab those straps into one hand and we'll turn around. All right, coming to a kneeling position, I'm going to grab the straps in my hands and the palms will face back behind me. I'm gonna stack my spine once again. Ribs are down, shoulders wide. Squeeze the shoulder blades together as you press the palms back Bring the arms back again gently as the carriage moves. 
I'm going to take care to draw my ears back so I'm not encouraging a forward head position here. Exhale before you move. Shoulders pinched together. Good. If you need a little more resistance for this one, feel free to kick it up and add a light spring or an extra light spring to that heavy spring. Or if you need to take it down a little bit, that's totally fine too. You could do a light spring instead of the heavy. Good, let's go for three. Last two. And one. Pause with the palms behind you. You're gonna look to your right and center. Look left and center. Look right, center. Shoulder blades squeezing together, left and center. Very nice. Close the stopper. Great, now we're gonna stack the spine once again, ribs down. We're gonna bring the arms up, palms facing behind you. We're gonna take this to a T and bring it back. So palms are facing back. Feel those shoulder blades squeeze together as the hands press back and back. If you need a little less resistance or more, feel free to find it. Taking care to feel the shoulder blades squeezing together, not letting the traps take over. Good. Let's go for four more. Making sure the ribs don't pop as the arms push back. If you need to take the height of the arms a little bit lower, that's fine too. Very good, last one. Beautiful work, those are hard. Last up for arms, we're gonna do bicep curls. So I'm gonna come to sitting down on my butt. My legs are gonna be extended long over the shoulder rest. You can cross your ankles if that feels better. And I'm going to flip my palms to face up. Hands will go into the straps. I've got enough room behind me so that there's about a hand's distance worth of space. I'm gonna sit up really tall, find a deep C curve. So it's like someone's pushing my belly button back and I'm in, my spine is in the shape of a C. And I'm gonna keep the elbows high, just bend and extend at the elbow. Shoulders are rolled back. I use that exhale to find my core engagement. Good, not letting the elbows dip down here. I'm really trying to keep them high. Again, if you need more or less resistance, Add a spring, take off a spring, or lower the spring resistance, whatever you gotta do. Let's go for three more. Last two. And one, beautiful work. Okay, close the stopper, we're gonna move on. Last up, I'm gonna go for some glute and thigh work, some of my favorite exercises to do. So my headrest is down, I switch onto a blue spring, otherwise known as a light spring. If you want to do a heavy spring, you can, but proceed with caution. So uh, if you want a yoga block or something for your head, go for it. I'm going to come down to resting on my elbow. I'm going to take that strap, place it onto my left foot, and I'm going to stack the spine so my legs will be in tabletop. I'm going to press the top hip away, rib cage is down, and you can place your hand onto the mat in front of your rib cage or onto the shoulder block. I'm gonna start off super simple. I'm gonna lift the leg to hip height, flex through the foot, press the leg out to the side and bring it back. So your goal is to press the heel so it's in line with the hip and then bring it back so the knee is stacked right on top of the knee. Your hips are stacked such that you're not compressing your uh, right side of your torso onto the carriage and um, letting your top hip rock. You wanna rock that top hip away so you have a nice stacked spinal alignment or a pelvic alignment, excuse me. We're gonna go for three more. And one, press to the side. We're gonna flex through the foot still. Knee is facing forward, go for pulses. Eight, to eight, Not seven, forgot how to count. Six, five, four, three, two, one, bring it back down. I'm gonna bring the leg forward in front of the hip, point through the foot, bring it to the side. Flex through the foot as you bring it forward, point through the foot as you bring it to the side. Good, I just wanna do five or so of these. Really finding that nice long extension as you press to the side. Good. Definitely feeling outer thighs, hamstrings, a little bit of glutes, we'll get to that soon. 
Good, and more intensity. So I'm gonna bring the leg just about in, in line with the hip. I'm going to slightly turn it in so that my heel is facing up toward the ceiling a little bit. I'm gonna take tiny pulses up for eight, seven, six. The carriage might move a little bit, it might be still. Four, core is on, ribs are down. Two, one. Oh boy, that was fun. I'm now going to skate that strap up over my knee onto my thigh. Leg stand tabletop, I'm gonna do an express version of my favorite glute series, which I'll link up here or in the description box somewhere. I'm gonna stack my hips, once again, ribs down, flex through the feet. I'm going to lift the leg up, lower it down. We're just gonna do five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna lift up tiny pulses, five, four, three, two, one, pause here, internal rotation, knee to knee, lift, heel to heel, lift, knee to knee, lift, heel to heel, lift. Three more, I'm laughing because I haven't done these in a while. They're so much harder than the last time I did them. Oh boy, last two. And one. Oh boy, you did it. Let's take that strap off of the leg. Give yourself a pound out through the glute with your fist. Let's move on to the other side. So next, I'm going to awkwardly turn away from you. So I'll be facing this direction for the next entire sequence. I'm gonna find that other strap, place it onto the arch of my right foot. And I'm gonna find that same resting position I had with my head on the opposite side. Legs come to tabletop, I'm stacking my hips. So I'm pressing my top hip away so my right hip is on top of my bottom hip. And I'm going to be flexing the feet, pressing the leg out to the side so the leg Heel is in line with the top hip, and I'm going to bring it back to starting. Also take care not to let that top shoulder rock in. You wanna keep your shoulders stacked vertically on top of each other, as well as the hips. Ribs stay down. Good. We're gonna go for another six. This is five. And four. You're still using your breath to engage through the core. Very, very important. Last three. Final two. And one. Check in with your hips. Make sure they're stacked. Tiny pulses with the knee facing forward. You've got six, five, four, three, two, one. Down to hip height again. Flex the foot. Bring it forward. Point the foot. Take it to the side and slightly back. Flex the foot, bring it forward. <sighs> Point the foot, bring it to the side or slightly back. Keep making sure that your hips are staying stacked, your shoulders are staying stacked. <sighs> you exhale and find your core each time you push through that strap. <sighs> Good, three more. <sighs> Final two. And one. Pause there. We're gonna bring the leg forward. Slightly rotate the leg so that the heel is facing up. We're gonna go for eight tiny pulses. Eight, seven, six, five. Oh boy, that's a burner. Three, two, one. Holy moly, okay. Strap goes on top of the thigh, up above the knee. We're gonna stay in that Tabletop position, lying on your side. Let's do it. So we're going to stack the hips, stack the shoulders. Big breath in, find your core engagement, lift and lower for five. Staying in parallel. Three, two, one. Pause at the top, tiny pulses for five, four. Holy Jesus, two, one. Internal rotation, external rotation. We're gonna internally rotate, knee to knee, lift, heel to heel or toe to toe. Carriage is gonna move. Knee to knee, toe to toe. Don't forget about your abs, this is three. And switch. Two, switch, one, switch. Oh my God, okay, let's take that off of the leg. You've had enough, I've had enough, everybody's had it. And let's roll onto your back. Before we do that, I'm gonna switch onto a red spring. We're gonna go for an assisted figure four stretch. I'm gonna place my headrest into the upright position. Grab one of the straps. I'm gonna start with the right side. 
I'm going to place it onto the arch of my right foot. I'm going to cross my left ankle over my right knee and I'm going to bend that right foot. I'm going to place my left hand onto my thigh on the left side. I'm going to let that strap really help me with this stretch. It's going to feel quite nice. If you like a little bit more assistance with this stretch, you could add a yellow spring or maybe even a blue spring onto that heavy spring. So instead of a heavy, you could do a heavy and an extra light or a heavy and a light. Good. We're also going to extend that right leg up to the ceiling. You can also take a moment and let the right leg float back and let your pelvis go into a tilt. That's fine here too. I might intensify the stretch on the left side for you. All right, anchor yourself onto the foot bar with the left foot. Get rid of that right strap. Let's go for the left side. Left foot in your left strap. Leg up to 90. Cross your ankle over your knee. And if, again, if you don't have 90, that's totally fine. Just find it where you can. I'm going to give yourself the assist that you like. I almost forgot to bend my leg on the left side. That really helps. So the spring is pulling you back. You can give a little extra stretch by placing your hand or your forearm on the right thigh. Give you a nice sense of opposition. Really stretch through the glute on the right side or the glutes on the right side. Shoulders wide. Big breath in. Very, very nice. Let's take that strap off of the foot after you anchor your right foot down onto the machine. Let's just take a quick stretch in a T since we worked our upper body a lot. Scoot away from the shoulder blocks a little bit. Bring your arms up over your shoulders or if you can be on the foot bar or down on the sandpaper, whatever feels best. Rib cage is down. We're just going to open the arms out to a T. If you have the flexibility, you can bring your fingertips down and your upper arms down to the side of the machine. Let them open wide and relax. If that doesn't feel right to you today, just open them to where you feel a comfortable stretch. Your goal is not to pop the ribs up. You want to keep those ribs anchored down. You want to feel stretched through your pectorals, just like the front of your chest where your chest and your shoulders meet, really, like that kind of area, as well as your biceps. It's going to help with keeping a nice open posture. Good. Let's not stay static for too long. Let's open up. Take a big breath in. Exhale, release. One more time, up above your shoulders, out to the side. Check your ribs, check your pelvis. Make sure your sacrum is heavy on the mat. Palms are still facing up. Big breath in. Exhale, gather yourself, grab onto the backs of your thighs. Roll up slowly with control, <laughs> more control than I did. You were all done, you did amazing. Thank you so much for joining me. If you would, please subscribe if you've not already. I would love to see you again. And also please give this video a like and comment. I can't tell you how encouraging it is to hear from you all daily. So please let me know what you thought and what you'd like to see again. And also I will be releasing another reformer series soon. If you'd like to do another daily challenge or a series, subscribe to find that here soon. P.S. Thank you so much to everybody for leaving a super thanks last week. It really means a lot to me when you guys do that. Big, big, big thanks. Bye.